32 years ago, as an 18-year-old boy with lots of hair, I started my journey at Zambia National Broadcasting you know, Services. Call it a broadcasting pilgrimage. Gold-fueled, Jesus-driven, what a long journey it's been. During my 52 years old, 52 years in the media, I've pr produced and presented some amazing programs. Quite a good morning, Zambia. It's in its 40th year. Let the people talk. It is in its 27th year. But perhaps one program that really stands out is Frank Top. 30 years on, after it ran for 20 years, like a prodigal son, I'm back home. In my 52 years in broadcasting, and I, I turned 70 this year, I've come back home to join my family and revisit Frank Top. During that time, we produced some amazing episodes. Now, I take you back in memory lane. So that, I think to, uh, you know, what has kept us on, the, on our feet is right. the element of discipline, basically. Right. Finally, you know, we started on a lighter in a note. You know, let's end on a lighter note. Communication you know, uh, can have its own you know, problems. Give us an example of how you know, difficult communication can, can be. Tiberani, Tiberani, Tiberani. Our Menari Apanua, Minister of Overseas Development, and uh, he has just returned from a tour of Europe. Let's be very attentive as he speaks to us. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for our Minister of Overseas Development. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm very happy to address you all. <laughs> when I went back to England, <laughs> I met the Queen. <laughs> Do you know what the Queen said? <laughs> the Queen said, All the people must be free. <laughs> They must be well. <laughs> they must be in peace. <laughs> Do you know why? <laughs> Let's find out why. Oh, yes. Ambuya <laughs> Yesu. After that. <laughs> I went to Chileka Airport. There too, I found everybody free. They were well. They were in peace. Therefore, in follow-up. Aren't you happy that you are free? God in follow. later, I spoke to my son. By the way, this was on the phone. Where I'm standing here, where I'm standing here, I can look at all of you. small boy and I said this boy suffers from malaria but in my case I'm not a fool I'm fit very very fit sweet number one on the to you all I say congratulations.
Well, Chitime, since time is running out, as a matter of policy, let's put up the meeting. Goodbye. Can, what, 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 what can you say to uh, what can you say to that? Absolutely amazing. That is 30 years ago. I'm back home with Frank Talk. Good evening and welcome to Frank Talk Revisited. My guest has been in politics for many years. And among my accomplishments, they are many. She's been deputy speaker of the house she's been a minister of information labor but what stands out now is that she's the vice president of this beautiful country called zambia viewers audience i present to you on frank top my special guest and we are honored vice president wk mutale nelumango Good evening, Mom, and welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening, Frank, on Frank Talk. You look good, Mom. Oh, thank you. Your <laughs> job is so strenuous. Where do you get this energy from, you know, to ensure that you still look good? Wow. I, I am not... Uh, <laughs> I, I really don't uh, mind so much of the looks. Right. That's not something that I think about so much, but yep. thank you for the compliment Absolutely. that I still look good. I don't concentrate on what I look like, it's what I do. Yep. What is it that I must do? And where do I get the energy from? Absolutely. Oh, from the passion to do what I do. Excellent. And basically, the Bible says it's him who gives me strength to do what I do. Amen. So I have my strength anchored in the Lord God Almighty. Absolutely. Let me take back you in uh, memory lane, you know, Vice President. You were born in 1955 in the rural setup of Kaputa. What was it like, you know, growing up in an economically and socially challenging environment? You don't reveal the age of a lady. <laughs> I am only 45 years old. All right. Okay. <laughs> of course. Age is just a number. <laughs> Indeed. Right. Indeed. My heart is still very young. Yes, I was born in Kaputa. Yeah. Still backward. I think some people saw the videos not too long ago. Yeah. Um, probably worse than I found it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I mean, than I left it. But uh, it is difficult to say what, uh, what it felt like yeah. because that is all I knew. Yeah. And it was good to be in that village. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed almost every moment of my life yeah. because I knew nothing better. That is <laughs> something that, uh, Frank, you should understand. Mm -hmm. You only miss that which you know. Yeah. And all I knew was my village. Right. And therefore, it gave me everything. It doesn't mean that every moment was good for me. Mm -hmm. Because even in that poor, you have called economically challenged, right. um, which is true, extremely economically challenged up to now and worse, like I've said, mm -hmm. uh, there were still degrees of economic challenge. Right. And I think I was among the poor. Yeah. I was the poor. Yeah. So you are looking at an environment where there is poverty. Mm -hmm. And even there, there are some so-called rich and some so-called poor. Absolutely. And I was the poor of that poor community. Right, right. So there were those moments. And, and why did I feel so poor? Maybe from a very young age to about six, mm -hmm. which I remember very little, but I, I still have some memory of my father. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't so rough, I remember him fondly. Yeah. But then he left at that moment, he died. So you, you see there is that, uh, also economic issues set, setting yeah. up in the home, and therefore I was an uh, half orphan yeah. in a, a poor community. Absolutely. If I tell you some things I did growing up, you would probably think, uh, yeah. is this true? Yeah. But we survived with my mother, 
And uh, it was a good life Absolutely. because that's all we knew. Yeah, we've, we've got something in common, Vice President. You know, my dad died when I was young, mm. just nine years old. And I come from a Christian uh, in a country, a Christian family. Mm. Having said that, I was still very annoyed with God oh. that he took away my father at such an early age. <laughs> he did the same to you. <laughs> Were you angry? What was your reaction when you lost your father? Yeah, because I was about six, and uh, th there isn't much formation of anger yeah. in me. There was no anger. Um, uh, I, I would feel lonely sometimes yeah. when I didn't have what my friends had. Their yeah. father, and you know a father is a provider. Mm -hmm. So there were moments, it's a fishing you know, village yeah. and hunting, that was the, the things that were going on. When colleagues would eat meat, mm -hmm. And for us to have that meat and fish, we had to really struggle with my mother to yeah. be able to buy from within the village. Yeah. I can't go through it. Sometimes it is now that I mm. know better. But even those moments, because I saw my mother cry mm. when she couldn't provide for us. Mm. What did you derive from your mom? The strength of character, yeah. the focus. I love my mother. She's long gone. She's been gone over 30 years, yeah. too. But uh, that was a woman to emulate. Mm. She knew what she wanted. Mm. She would not be intimidated in her own way. Mm. As a younger person, she was not not even a Christian, I must say, mm. for my mother. Mm. Not the Christianity I know mm. today. Yes, she went to church. But over time, when I had already grown and left for secondary school, mm. she got born again. And I saw a difference. But even in that state, without being a Christian, she was very strong. Absolutely. Oh, she used to drink a bit, yeah. and uh, <laughs> no man should play around with my <laughs> mother. Okay. She would tell the men, get yeah. off from here, wake up, yeah. or whatever. She would really put them off. She had no time to be bullied, yeah. and I liked that. Yeah. Of course, sometimes I would say, Mom, but uh, she gave me the strength. And I would stand up, stand up against anybody, Brilliant. even at my age. The poverty in that area meant that some young girls became pregnant at a very you know, early age. Mm -hmm. You know, they went through social you know, challenges. Mm -hmm. But in that community, you came out strong, you excelled, and you finished your secondary school at Kasama Girls School with very, very good you know, grades. What was your driving force? Uh, probably my mother herself was so strong. I can't talk of pregnancies in my village. I think I would be exaggerating. Mm. They were not common. But they were early marriages. Yeah. Those were very common. Mm. So people married very early. Maybe there was no time to even get pregnant because they were mm. pregnant in their homes anyway at age 15 or things like that. Um, because by the time I was leaving, if, you know, People were already getting married, people of my age, by the time I was going to secondary yeah. school. So I can't remember any of my friends getting pregnant outside marriage. Mm. They all got pregnant after marriage. Yeah. But my mother, in her poverty, there is something I remember. She had an argument with one of the people she trusted. I will not mention this because uh, this person is one. Yeah. And if I say <laughs> exactly, then everybody knows who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, she looked to this person for support to look after us. And uh, that person said, look, these are girls. They'll just get married. What are you worried about? They are school and things. My mother cried like a funeral. She said, yeah. they will not get married. Yeah. Apparently, my mother, old as she was, she was, uh, uh, you know, in her time. My grandfather was the chief of my mm. tribe, and she was sent to school to start off to go to school in standard, to go to standard three. Yeah. And because, you know, the chief had other children that he had sent to school. When my mother went, started off, I learned, I learned my grandmother cried so much that my mother had to be brought back before she arrived. Uh, in Imbereshi. Mm -hmm. And because probably of that, she built this issue. She was probably angry that she didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why she insisted that 
we will do what we want yeah. him. She was not going to force any of us to get yeah. married. So probably that strength comes from her. I wanted to go to school. Right. Don't tell me I knew how good it would be. Yes, mm. I had raw models of what school meant. Mm. And those were teachers. They you were teachers. That's <laughs> the, those are the only ones who lived differently because they had, the, you know, houses. Yeah. Uh, you know, at my school, and they looked different. So I wanted to go to school. Excellent. And uh, enjoy what I saw they were as enjoying. A, as a rider to that vice president, you chose to be a teacher. You went on to, to learn, to train, and learn English, history. To be a teacher is one of the most thankless, you know, professions. You could have done something else. Why did you pick on this career? How much did I know to start with? Yeah. But I'll tell you, teaching was not my first choice. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a nurse. A nurse? I wanted to be okay. a nurse. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my mother, having passed through what she passed through, she didn't learn enough, mm -hmm. in my understanding, mm -hmm. be because she totally said, you can't be a nurse. Mm -hmm. Oh, she had all the beliefs. Mm -hmm. You can't be a nurse. You would need the medicine. You would run mad if you don't, whatever. <laughs> and even though I had all the papers to go to yeah. any of the schools yeah. that trained the uh, registered nurses, yes. because my mother insisted and said, by the time you finish, I'll be dead because I know you run mad. Uh, I have no medicine to give you. You'll be seeing <laughs> dead bodies, yeah. things like that. So that became a challenge. That's yeah. how come I turned to teaching. teaching. It was not uh, the first choice of mm. my feeling. But I don't regret a bit. Yeah. I have benefited. You say thankless. Uh, no, I, I think it is very fulfilling mm. because today I can see many of my students, yeah. you, you know, making it. Yeah. And that is the chalk bonus, we say. Yeah. It's the chalk bonus to see one of my students is something, is a Absolutely. doctor, is a what. Yeah. I feel great. And uh, the feeling was good even as I was mm. uh, teaching. Yeah, it's thankless and, uh, in the way, you know, that such an important profession you know, teachers are really underpaid. Exactly. Yeah. That I agree with. Yeah. And uh, maybe that's what drove me into the next phase of my life. Right. I, and because I wasn't fully prepared, because you asked me, you know, I picked these subjects and so yeah. on. I, I wasn't fully prepared as to, you know, becoming a teacher. And therefore, uh, picking English was just mm -hmm. one of the things that I thought I could do. Right. And... Uh, history itself i think even the the, the, the college was looking mm. at the strengths mm. in your own results mm -hmm. in order to offer you that which mm. you needed to do mm. so uh, it is thankless in yeah. the sense that teachers don't get as, mu as, as much as one would want yeah. and uh, focusing on that at one moment i would tell all the teachers mm. that you are deceptive I would tell them uh, in my own uh, maybe crazy way that you teachers, you deceived us into becoming teachers yeah. because you look like you are smart and you are doing yeah. great. So we joined you only to suffer yeah. like this. And I'll tell you one suffering I hated in my very younger uh, early age, a time of uh, being a teacher was lining up for the president. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> I, that is the truth, yeah. because we would be made to line up yeah. long, sometimes the whole day with your yeah. pupils, yeah. waiting for the president, mm -hmm. because he was visiting town. And at the end of the day, you were told he's not coming. Yeah. You'll come tomorrow. Yeah. I just hated standing yeah. in that queue in the sun. Mm -hmm. And I remember that's one day I said, you teachers, you are deceptive. Mm -hmm. This is bad. But uh, generally, I enjoyed my teaching career. Really? I really did. What about your life as a unionist? How, do you, how did you become a union? A union? I, I, I think at that moment, I was already a Christian. I was born again. Mm -hmm. And one thing the Lord has given me over time mm -hmm. is uh, hatred for injustice. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I will fight injustice mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Mm. I hate it. He put it on my heart. And therefore, I thought I could contribute to the same things you have talked about, yeah. improving the conditions of, you know, uh, service for 
teachers. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I would speak my heart off, right. even at my local level, that is a school. And it is through that that colleagues saw that uh, I could represent them mm -hmm. higher and higher. And I did, for me, I believe, and mm -hmm. I would like to say all this, if anybody does something half-heartedly, mm -hmm. that is the worst thing. Yeah. That is lukewarm. That is mediocre. Yeah. Whatever you choose to do, do it mm -hmm. with all your heart. Yeah. I chose to be a unionist, and I put in everything, and I'm proud of that short period that I served as a unionist. Brilliant. Where from school, I rose to become vice president of my union. I was part of the, you know, the founding members of the Secondary School Teachers Union of Zambia, mm -hmm. says TUS. So I rose from the school through to becoming vice president of my union. Brilliant. I did it convincingly. You joined, later on you joined in a politics where you were just destined to serve you know, you know, people. And in saying so, why did you join politics? If you're not serving people, who are you serving? Mm -hmm. You are serving self. And I don't think that God created us. Mm -hmm. Like the Bible says, just for food and the stomach. Mm -hmm. We are created to serve other humans, mm -hmm. bringing glory to God. That's why he, ke he keeps us in communities. Mm. God puts us in communities, in families. That is what God does. And when you are put in a family, the family does not just mean biological. Mm. It would mean a country. What for? Is it just going around to save yourself and be happy within mm. yourself? I don't know. For me, you are right. Yeah. God has put upon me to save humanity in the capacity that he puts me in. That includes my biological family, mm -hmm. that includes my community, that I should save. So yes, it is exactly the same reason, Frank, that I moved from unionism yeah. to save a larger, not larger, uh, I should not use that, to go back to my roots, right. to save the people of Kaputa, that poor village is what drove me, that I could bring some justice for mm. them. Why is it that they are so backward as a, a district? Right. What would you then, Vice President, be telling people who say, you know, politicians are deceptive. It's, quote unquote, a career of liars. People only serve their own interests. What makes you so different? Because I am. It's my choice. It's my choice. There are things I feel inside of me, there is nothing I can do. Yes, I cannot speak for all politicians. Unfortunately, there could be many that are in that co category mm. of going in to lie, to deceive people in order. And this is maybe, I don't know whether I'm even popular at all. This is what makes some people, mm. you know, look at me and say, what is she? Because I refuse to lie, mm. one, my God tells me all liars mm. are children of the devil. Mm. This is clear according to the book of John. Mm. When he says you are liars because you are like your father, the devil, mm. who is a liar right from the beginning. So when you lie, you are just being yourself. Mm. So it starts from there. If you are a child of God, it doesn't matter where you are serving. Mm. And this, I'll argue with any colleague who is a politician to tell me to lie because I must convince people. I will convince people with what I believe is the truth. Mm. I could be wrong. You differentiate the truth. Yeah. I could be wrong in my belief, Frank, but I will not lie. Yeah. When I tell you, it's because I believe it, yeah. not intentional to uh, deceive you. No, yeah. that I will not do. It doesn't matter whether I lose the position. I am ready to move on because God will use me in any other position as long as he keeps me right. alive. Talk about positions, you know, our Vice President, you have served many uh, uh, portfolios, Minister of Labor, Minister of Information, the face female deputy, you know, speaker. What stands out out of all this? Labor. Why? Minister of Labor. I loved it. I still am learning about being Vice President, Frank. 
So I can't assess how much, you know, um, labor, Ministry of Labor in all these that I've done was more real to me. I was dealing with real issues that affect the livelihoods of people. So when I'm talking about conditions of service, you know, as a minister, I'm listening to that. It is not imaginary. It is real. I can see the people going through this. So it made me understand the fact that in, in, in labor, there is an employer mm -hmm. and an employee. Mm -hmm. And it m gave me an opportunity to understand both worlds. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when Mr. Understandings come, if I'm speaking to people that are the laborers, mm -hmm. you know, laborer shouldn't mean me pick and shovel, mm -hmm. but that also is labor. Labor is anything that a person does and uh, brings in something Absolutely. for living. I am able to tell the laborer that you have a duty here because that's where it all starts from. You want your company to succeed, work hard. Because what I discovered was a lot of people will say, this company, we are not paid well, we are not looked after. And you tell them why. And those in accounts, you know, I had good experience, would say, madam, here we deposit 20 million. You remember those days? Right. 20 million. And yet they pay us. We deposit 20 million every day. And yet look at what we get. Then I would say, yeah. How much do you spend every day mm. to run the enterprise? We don't know. Therefore, if you don't know, you can't judge the employer. Mm. It is either you get the money and pack your bags and go because the enterprise will not continue. Right. And for the person who is the employer must remember that you must look after your people within the capacity that you have. Mm. Because if you pay peanuts, you will end up employing monkeys. Absolutely. And it is devastation in that enterprise. Nothing good. So right. to the employer, I understand that they can't pay beyond what they make. But we all need a job. That little thing we are getting is better than nothing. Absolutely. But let's grow the enterprise together. The worker must feel a sense of, you know, belonging. Right. And then work together, improve, get the conditions right. better. So I loved it. Right. 2011, you know, when MMD lost uh, inner power, fast forward, you took a break from politics. You came back, joined the uh, UPND in 2001, uh, you know, right? Fast forward you know, again, you know, after many years in opposition, and you were chairman in UPND, you picked as running mate to the current, uh, you, know, uh, you know, president. Were you surprised, you know, when you were picked as running mate? Why are you jumping there, uh, uh, Frank? Uh, <laughs> in reality, is I didn't uh, rest from politics. Yeah, that, that is. Uh, Took a short break. Uh, no, I didn't even have a break yeah. in my political career. Yeah. I actually was MMD. Right. Except I didn't occupy a position where yeah. people could see me. In MMD, I was chairperson, you know, for labor and social security, yeah. which I lost. It was a wonderful year, 2011, for me, because I lost that position at the convention. Remember, I was deputy speaker yeah. that term. And that means detached from the political activity. Mm -hmm. And uh, to expect me to win against uh, my brother Liato, who was the Minister of Labor, mm -hmm. was a tall order. But I, I, I wanted to continue, like I've said, yeah. I like the labor issues. I lost. So when you lose, you don't leave the party. Yeah. I was still a member, except I didn't have to be. I lost my NEC, we called our uh, party national uh, uh, body, the, the most, the highest the policy highest making body, body yeah. uh, NEC, National Executive Committee. So I was not there. Mm. But after we lost, you have to understand that there was turbulence within the party. Mm. To stabilize again was not easy. But personally, with a few colleagues, we called ourselves elders. It doesn't matter if I give you one of them, you'll say, how did you become an elder? We called ourselves Council of Elders. Mm -hmm. And we worked so much behind the scenes to try and bring unity 
to the colleagues who were in NEC. You will remember some diehards beating up people. You will remember those issues of, uh, you know, the party, you know, wanting this president, that president, and they failed to agree at the convention, which they did provincial, mm -hmm. you know, without coming together. Yeah. So there were issues. Uh, you call me to two hours, don't call me to 45 minutes yeah. if you want my story. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So, so after that, I saw, when we made that effort, I saw that the party was going nowhere. In the meantime, I was being quoted by the UPND. And because of that, mm. I was reading through their uh, documents, the manifesto, the constitution. And when I saw there was no way, and I still felt within my heart that I needed to save, have a platform where to save from. I didn't have the capacity to create. Maybe I should have created a, a civil society organization, some NGO. I had no capacity for that. So I needed a platform to continue. Uh, serving and uh, after analyzing I thought I would go to UPND. UPND with any effort that anybody made towards coming going to PF I just didn't have the peace of the Lord in me this, I don't want this to is go a to party yes. which people labeled tribal and that's the party you you joined the uh, vice president you didn't this cross your mind that people were labeling this party, you know, tribal? I, I don't listen to such, sorry, if I use your platform to use one word, rubbish. Yeah. I don't believe in tribal. Mm. Um, if you have justice on your mind, you don't look at people through the eyes of a tribe. And, the, oh, oh, you know, if there were those allegations, right. I got in and see. You want to see yourself? Oh, yes. You're unproved. And uh, because yeah. they had or a disapproved. beautiful manifesto, a beautiful constitution, I'll say this, colleagues from UPND may not agree, <laughs> there was very little difference between UPND and MMD. Yeah. And therefore, I was home. Right. You don't hear me, you know, calling MMD names. And I sit there, my colleagues are seeing what they saw mm -hmm. in MMD, wh which I was part of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say, can you make comparison, particularly with the outgoing? I, say, I remember one time saying, now you see how PF is ruling. What are you still saying about us yeah. as MMD? Mm -hmm. I remember one man is now late in our office who said, ha, it's like comparing uh, apples to lemons. Mm. Because they had come to realize that uh, MMD was not that bad. Yeah. So I didn't move from MMD. Mm. I can't lie again to the people that because MMD was so bad, no. I moved because I saw they were failing, leadership was failing to come together and you know, governize the support that we needed and that's why i saw hope in the upnd and i went in and i have interacted Absolutely. with them uh, it was the vehicle for my saving because it aligned with my feeling for the people isn't it challenging particularly yeah. to strengthen the institutions of governance i'm still here saying we must work on that brilliant it's obviously very challenging for a woman to operate in a male-dominated you know, environment. How do you respond to this? And that's my weakness. I have started to learn that what I think and feel is uh, extremely negative. Mm. Because I was listening to one program and it convinced me not too long ago that program was talking about uh, racism. And he said, you know, this person said you know, how do you feel about racism? This person said, I don't see race. But that in itself, according to this program I was listening to, is negative. If you don't see race, then you can't resolve the matter. So I learned, I have to start feeling man and woman. I have to learn to tell the difference between you and me. 
because I hardly see it. You can all be many here. I don't care. Right. But I have to learn. And this makes me <coughs> weak when it comes to the women folk. Mm -hmm. I am aware of the challenges. But to continuously see myself as a woman has been a challenge to me. I can play with boys. Brilliant. Like you. Of course, not like that. Yeah. I can be with you. You are just another person. Brilliant, <laughs> Vice President. I, I love that. Fast forward 2021. You're picked as running mate to President Takende Ichilema. Obviously, there were a lot of people jostling mm -hmm. you know, to be you know, running mate. You're picked as female running mate. Your reaction? When I was picked number one as vice president for the party, mm -hmm. I made a statement. Some people, it was not prepared. I didn't know that day that that would happen. But because it is just in me, I, I don't see position for benefit. Yeah. I see position for responsibility. It leaves me nervous, and uh, people must know that I get very nervous because I want to perform. Yeah. And when I think I may fail, it is terrible. I need encouragement. So for me, I see responsibility. And immediately I am appointed. I was asked, appointed to be running mate. I am saying, Lord, how? Why? Will I do it? What will I do? Mm -hmm. I was literally, you know, shaking. It was not something that yeah. people, maybe people would say, yeah. I had many reasons, including the money issues for campaign. But how? How, Lord God Almighty? How am I going to do this? The campaign itself, what value am I going to add to Haka in the, in the campaign? This is the truth of myself. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Vice President, oh my God, what will I be doing in there? But I had to continue daily with God's support and God came through for me yeah. believe you me I don't want to give you the detail you win the elections mm. against all odds oh yeah were you expecting it in politics unless you have a revelation from God humanly you, you should never sit there mm. and say I'm very confident but uh, I was convinced that we needed to come in. God had been encouraging me that we should go in. But if we didn't win, mm. and not winning by manipulation, if we truly failed, I would have been at peace. But mm. uh, for me, I started seeing human signs, human signs, and losing was t going to be more shocking to me than winning. So, yes, uh, maybe where you are sitting, Frank, you saw there was an oppo uh, uh, not opportunity. There was room for losing for UPND. For me, losing was going to be more shocking. Yeah. I knew the environment was rough. Yeah. I knew there were probably manipulations. Remember, I came from a ruling party before. So I've been in the ruling party. And sometimes I speak like, what? There are certain things that happen when you are in your position that are more of not true. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because I know we are in power. People, when we come to 2026, we are going to win because we are doing great things. Eh? Mm -hmm. But uh, colleagues will start saying this, that, this. But there was also, there is also reality sometimes, including manipulation when you don't have the space right. to, to, to campaign. Then you were squeezed, but people had made up their mind. Right. If we had lost, I was going to be more right. shocked. Before we take a break, before the audience you know, ask you your questions, you know, your first day at the office as vice president, what, do you, what was your first day like <laughs> in the office? The first day is inauguration, and I was shaking all over the place. Really? Oh, yeah. You were nervous? Extremely to sign that thing. Yeah, I think the judge had to a, a, hold. A, a, a young, to a young hold girl it. from Kaputa. This in, villager. No, she, this, this villager. This villager is now vice president. I remember, there is still my village in me. Uh huh. Okay. A beautiful village in you. Oh, praise God. Yeah. 
but the point is I was all over. If colleagues think I was all over, yeah. they, they thank God for that judge or is it the registrar yeah. who had to hold the, literally for me to read. Yeah. I think my signature must have come out something new. What, what was going through your mind? I just get nervous because yeah. there are so many people and they are expecting so much from me. Am I going to deliver? So I went in with a clear mind of our, our manifesto. If you are talking of the actual work, it is clear in my mind. What have we promised to people through our manifesto? Yeah. Not what people were imagining but what our manifesto said, and I am still focused every day, working as much as I can to see how things can be put together. Really? I don't have to be on your TV. All right, I just need to very work. Very quickly, what road did you find? A there? lot of it, that yeah. I must say, yeah. and I keep asking myself, what work was going on? We still have a terrible culture. The work is difficult to move. And I'm feeling sitting here as vice president saying, do we still have people who have failed to adjust? You remember that in parliament they asked me a question about, you know, the, the appointments. Some are civil servants that ought to remain, but they are still so stiff, failing to move at our pace. The new Don government, Frank, is running, not walking, to yeah. try and deliver. So some people still have the culture of relaxing, the culture of, I went this side, then I will have two days off, oh, because basically the work culture is terrible. And the issue of making money quick. Yeah. That's why we, are, we accept the appointments. The first thing you say is, how much will I be getting? Don't get that job because you are looking for money. In fact, my late young brother told me uh, when I was a minister then, he says, Alabantu, then chito vafuaya, vafuaya okufola. People don't look for a job to work. They want to get paid. Yeah. We have to change that culture. That attitude must change and change it now. You are in the office to save that is why the payment is a reward for the work done, Absolutely. not the salary as the driving, the motivating factor. And we need to do a lot. A lot of things went on. When we talk corruption, Frank, this is not uh, unreal. You go to the roads under local government, because I am, yes, I have directly uh, under me uh, issues of uh, uh, DMMU where you make it a marketplace. Now I come to understand DMMU. It needn't be a road with where people go and it is just the supply or whatever. Yeah. And everybody was a millionaire. When I look at the indebtedness, then I'm saying I must have been the only poor person in this country because these things have millions and millions. This supply of what? 20 million. And we have to pay those because it is indebtedness to, you know, by the right. country. <coughs> Can you imagine? People became millionaires. Maybe you were. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a poor son of a reverend. Okay. <laughs> the dead reverend. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah but I, I hope you do understand. Yes, Th so those are some of the things. When we talk of corruption, it is terrible. When I was still in opposition, I said, these guys are applying what is called lawfare, lawfare, warfare, lawfare. Mm. Frank, hear me. Mm. That is why today they have tied a lot of knots. Lawfare is not uh, uh, easy. If I supply you with this water, mm. one, two bottles, and you write four bottles, therefore I'm paid for four bottles, the paperwork is done. And you even say, I've delivered the water. And you don't know who you have delivered it to. So who, who even got the two, yeah. the four bottles? Cry. But is it easy to prove this yeah. matter? Those Cry. are forensic issues I can't yeah. fully understand. Maybe they would. But I'm seeing difficulty as a person. That is using 
law, legal process for doing wrong things. Right. But it will be corrected. The Lord is on the throne. You can be clever to man, but you will. Before God, there is a day of reckoning. Absolutely. Nothing is impossible, you know, as far as, you know, God is you know, concerned. And this is Frank Revisited. My guest, W.K. Uh, Mutalena Lumango, Vice President of this country on Frank Talk. We take a break and the members of the audience will be asking questions. Join us very shortly. <laughs> Please identify yourself. Your Honor, uh, the uh, Republican Please speak up. We can't Vice hear you. President. Um, my name is Elias uh, Gabriel Banda, Unzasu President. I first of all want to congratulate you officially uh, on, on, on your thunderous uh, August 12, 2021 uh, victory. Um, the students from the University of Zambia love you. Um, not by fire by and by choice. Um, the University of Zambia, according to my grandfather's story, was constructed by the poor people through contribution of chickens, goats, and a few materials. Uh, the University of Zambia was constructed for the vulnerable students. However, um, as a student union, we have noticed that um, with time, the tuition fees for the University of Zambia has increased. As we are here seated in this studio, the University of Zambia is the most expensive school in Zambia, from being the lowest to the highest to the most expensive. Uh, in addition, uh, in 2018 and 2019, Your Honor, um, the previous regime, without consulting the students, abolished the meal allowances. That meal allowances, Your Honor, you will agree with me that most of the, our leaders current in government, including uh, our Bali, uh, His Excellency, benefited from the meal allowances. However, it was abolished. Uh, the question is, um, before getting into your office, you understood the challenges of the students across the country. And therefore, uh, asking on behalf of UNSA, CBU, uh, when, Your Honor, are you reinstating the student meal allowances? In addition, the student unions from across the country are also asking that when are we having a consultative meeting with your office this is based on the premise that in the previous regime, the student unions were never consulted on any matter affecting them. They were thrown away, but we want to change this culture and work with your government for the best welfare of the students. And finally, your honor, uh, what is your position on homosexuality? Does your government support homosexuality? Thank you. President Nayombe. Good evening, Madam Vice President. Good evening. My name is uh, Nayombe Muliunda. I am coming from a non-governmental organization called Girl Kicks. Girl? Girl Kicks. Uh, we are using karate to educate the girl child. And I know earlier you spoke of you not seeing gender as taking up space, and you were just seeing human beings and not uh, man and woman. So we are taking up this space, which is also predominantly male. Now, with the coming of the new government, uh, the new Dawn government, and the free education policy, are you aware that uh, there's still a number of people who cannot afford basic necessities as books and uniforms to take the, the children to school. So yes, we have free education, but the parents don't have the capacity to take the kids to school for lack of basic necessities. Next. Um, Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Honor, the Vice President, you rightly said that 
you are an honest person, which gives us comfort. My question is on the digazation of Forest 27. First of all, are you a proprietor of land in Forest 27? <laughs> and uh, secondly, do you think degazetting the forest was done in the interest of the public? We saw Honorable Nkombo in Parliament while still in opposition when he rightly said that Forest 27 would revert back to a reserve forest. Do we see that happening? Because that was a huge campaign promise, uh, Vice President. Thank you. Fourth question. At the back. Uh, thank you so much, Your Honor, Vice President. My question encompasses on, uh, since the new Don government made mention that the economical liberators and uh, looking at the positive uh, response according to the inflation rate from 24.2 to 10.2 percent, hmm? but uh, oh. inflation, okay, inflation rate. So now we look at the Zambian uh, popu uh, population; it is encompasses of a lot of young youths, but yet uh, they're unemployed. And looking at the living standards, have gone high. So what is it uh, pertaining to the drop into the inflation rate, but yet the standards of living they are still high? That is my question. Thank you. Vice President, can you uh, take up uh, those, you know, four questions? Yes, thank you. I'll start from the last one. Right. Um, who says, uh, we called ourselves economically liberators, and I believe that we are. I am so convinced, colleagues, I'm so convinced, Zambians, I'm so convinced, Frank, that uh, Zambia will truly be economically free, yeah. not too long. Mm. What we need is to work together to be united and agreed. I listen to people speaking about policies and uh, sometimes calling us uh, by calling the, the president names mm -hmm. of being a, a person selling or uh, uh, giving up to the capitalists and things like that as just the political rhetoric because we should be looking on the ground. This is the president that wants to bring real wealth to the Zambian people. Mm -hmm. This is why, if you look at our policies, we have talked of partnerships, not just the public, private, but at individual levels. Mm -hmm. And this is one government which is saying, own something, including land. Own land. That land is an asset that you could partner with somebody with money. But we are still selling land. I'm talking to mm. the Zambians, still selling land. I think it is the most painful if you have land with title to sell it. That must be under very serious stress. That is how we want Zambians to be prepared. We want Zambians to own small mines mm. with artisan licenses. This is why you see us doing audit. Who owns what? Because. Ten people in this country, with the selfishness we have gone through, I uh, maybe exaggerating, maybe I can say 2,000 people could be the ones owning all the mines, mm. and we are sitting. We want all Zambians to participate, all those that are ready. When we talk investment, Frank, it, it shocks me that people are saying, you see, they want people to come. Investment is both foreign right. and local. And we are very clear on this. What is investment? Investment does not mean foreigner comes. Mm. You can also be an investor. All we do is to make the environment good for you who has money. If you don't, you can partner with somebody mm. and become also part of that investment. We are opening up the economy to ensure that the Zambians participate at the very micro level, if we, I don't want to use the language which I use, at a very small level, at the community level. We want you to come out of your university, sir, without going to go and look for a job in an office. Because the environment is good, you can partner with your colleagues. Partner with your colleagues. That is why we have small and, uh, small and medium enterprise. 
ministry. That's why we are encouraging the CEC. Yeah. We want you to go. You are the engineer. You are whatever. Come together, get money, start an enterprise. This is happening in other countries. Right. This is our, the way we are thinking. We want empowerment to the people. But you may not have capacity, particularly of finance, so you partner with somebody who comes. Please, hold on. That's why, Frank, we are decentralizing. Why should you sit back? colleagues with the knowledge you have, when a 25 million quarter comes in your constituents, don't you think you can do a road mm. there? We want money to be used right there so that the very ordinary people with the skill that we also are focusing on, training people, I am only economic liberator. When we say there should be training, should people must be happy. For example, we had the the uh, EU, Zambia, uh, you know, forum. Uh, forum. Where, if you saw, we even have money to train in skills. We have money under ILO. We have money in the Ministry of uh, Technology to bring training so that you are fully prepared to participate. It doesn't matter who you are. We want money to the people. Because when you talk of decentralization, you are talking not only devolving power, but resources also to the people. Get their colleagues. This is your country, the only country where you can prosper with your head high, prosper and share with the people. The witchcraft mentality of getting rich, you say, I am rich, you only feel rich when somebody else is suffering. That is witchcraft. Right. You only feel rich. Frank, are you getting me? Yes, I am. Some people don't feel they are comfortable if another person is at the same level. Mm. They want to grab everything so that somebody is begging. And then when we are distributing money in the markets, then you say you are a good government. Right. No, that will not happen. We want hard work because that is the money that is sustainable to yourself. You have worked for it. You will take care of it. You will continue to grow it not money that is dished out to you. It just kills people, right. Frank. Yeah. They go into all sorts of things. I don't want to go right. there. Yes. That's why I said yes. I need two hours. The inflation rate is going down. You are saying, sorry, you said living standard high. I think it is low. Basically, I think that's what you meant, my son, that the, the living standards are not as high as yeah. it should be. Yes. Inflation going down is an indicator of an improving economy. Mm. But it takes time. You know, there is mindset change. And we need that. I wish I had time yeah. to talk about yeah. that. Yes, we will see the effect. It doesn't come in a day. There are too many, you know, issues at play when it comes to the standard of living. But it will surely start showing. And when it starts showing, I think we'll be happy. I want to meet people that are smiling on the streets right. because they have their own resource. Degazetting uh, Forest 27, mm -hmm. uh, I'll start by saying, no, sir, I don't have, not even when I was in government as a minister, did I get land, unfortunately, even straight from government. Mm -hmm. Whatever little piece of land we have, we bought from individuals who are title. So, Personally, you said, I am, I, I don't know whether I'm honest, but I'm truthful. Yeah. <laughs> because you can choose to define words. No, uh, I own no property. And I don't think it was done in good faith. Mm. Colleagues, you don't. Today, with all the issues to do with climate change to start with, which is affecting us so negatively and affecting the world, why? And you will see that many people who are in Forest 27 have no concrete evidence. But you will find that these are people who have land elsewhere, mm. too. How selfish. Yeah. How selfish. It was not done in the public interest. It is wrong. It was wrong to degazette that part. Yep. And like I said, there is mm. law. But law was made by man. We are still struggling. 
how do we handle this? If Zambians understood that there is no malice in what we are doing, we should bring down this. Absolutely. And allow the law, the right law. This was wrong, sir. And I'm passionate about that. I don't care who is there. They may be my relatives, but you were wrong to do that, right. what you did. The other one is uh, the gender taking up the space. And basically, thank you for doing that. Uh, I do understand the challenges of the female gender, the woman. I do understand because the issue is that I'm also a woman. So there are things that no matter how much I feel a man, except I say, I don't have to look at a man like is a man mm. is any better. The brain is the same, Anna. Colleagues, women, we are the same. They are just male. We are female, but we are both men. They are male. Mm. Frank is a male. Yeah. I am a female, but we are both, both human beings. Great. Yeah. But I do understand the basic needs. There are some needs we even fail to talk about. I read a story, you know, in one of, somebody said those things and I, I just broke in my heart. You are talking of the basic necessities. Somebody said, you are bringing, that was in Luapula, that the girls, and there was a picture on your social media, whether it was created or not, but I read it, that you are giving us pads. Pads is not a taboo. Let us uh, talk about it because mm. uh, this is real. It's a physical thing. It happens. But we don't even have pads. So how do you go around <laughs> with a pad if you don't have a pad? You don't know how my heart felt. I wish I was as rich as Frank. I would be distributing some of these things. So yes, I do understand. I do understand that we still have challenges, and that's why you and me are there. We have to continuously find our space. Men, that is true, have occupied the space. And this is why I speak the way I do. Don't think woman, woman all the time yourself. When you sit with them, see yourself as equal. That's why they abuse us, because we have accepted to be subservient to yeah. the male. When you stand up, come on. Which abuse? Look at yourself. Which abuse? Why should the boy next to you think you are inferior and they'll make decisions over your body and your life? We have to be angry and stand up for ourselves. But I do understand the many challenges that we need to overcome. There are things I could discuss that I saw and I said, this is beautiful. Innovation that Zambians are doing to try and help this gender, even to remain in school, is not easy. It's not easy, especially that some things are seen like you are just careless. You are not careless. This is how God made you. You are bleeding that day. Uh, I don't want to injure the traditionalists, right. but there was the issue of Yunza. Maybe I'm coming from that. You say homosexuality. Why should we be talking about homosexuality? Mm. I think that whoever talks homosexuality relating it to New Dawn or to UPND is political malice. Please get it from me. Because at no moment have we ever said in opposition or in government, I am surprised that even when it comes through the highest house of this land in parliament, and I am speaking on behalf of <coughs> government, you remember when the president was in <coughs> New York, it came there that right. he has gone to sign whatever. Yeah. And I stood there to say, far from it. We are Christians too. This is a Christian nation. The colleagues that we work with, we will continue to work with them. But there is a line you draw on certain things. We have been very clear on this as a government. Why should we be talking about it? Ask those who are talking about it. Who are alleging that our embassies or things like that are, are celebrating this? Why don't you ask those people in embassies? Why don't you name them so, so that as a government, we ask them what it is? But that is political malice. We are a Christian nation. Haka Inde himself is a Christian. Wow, at least I know he is. Right. God is the judge. Frank, right. I am a Christian, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and Absolutely. I run every day with the fear of God. That's what I want. Ex I make mistakes. Ex Don't think I'm saying I'm a saint. Excellent, no. Vice President. We'll take the last four questions. No, I haven't even talked about university. You'll come back to that. Okay.
we take the last four questions. My yes. my name is uh, Victor Nyambe, Unzasu Prime Minister. My question pertains to one of the uh, uh, campaign uh, uh, manifestos that we saw from our current government, which pertains the education sector, in terms of uh, the loans. Uh, we saw that we were promised, and this is what motivated most of the students to turn out in numbers, that there will be a cancellation of student loans. And basically, my question is trying to find out when this will be in effect, if at all this is possible. Secondly, uh, just one question, please. Can we have okay, thank question, you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm a fourth year student at UNSA doing economics and also the founder of GYI and Street Economics and currently serving as the Secretary General for UNSA Hassan. I have a question. Um, so what measures um, has the government put in place in order to ensure value addition on exported goods such as copper uh, in order to increase the export value? Uh, on top of that, what measures has Zambia taken in order to boost intra-Africa trade? I had some comments on what the Vice President had said concerning SMEs and uh, empowering young people, uh, being interested in that, in that as a student, in terms of how we can use uh, SMEs and connect them to students and see to it that we can promote entrepreneurship. Uh, I would like to find out because as students and myself, I have some ideas on given an opportunity how we can decentralize uh, 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 the process of seeing to it that we empower stu students in being entrepreneurs and not because I feel that there's a little bit of centralization right now. Thank you. Well, second one, final question. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, Your Honor, uh, the Vice President. Good evening. Dr. Adena Lumango. Uh, my name is Sidney Mushili. And uh, my question is uh, actually pertaining to the reinstatement of new allowances, owing to the fact that uh, the cost of living in public schools for the students is quite compromised, or it's very high, so to say. So now, my, my question is, uh, what is your current stance on uh, the issue of reinstating new allowances? Away from uh, uh, academics, allow me also to uh, ask on the, on the, on the concern uh, of uh, you know, uh, the Public Order Act. We have, uh, we have a lot of concerns in the public domain concerning the issue of uh, uh, amending or reviewing the Public Order Act, which is actually uh, has brought a lot of tense or maybe has a lot of uh, uh, issues in the public. So my question is, is it true that uh, there are some concerns or uh, actually uh, issues of uh, amending or reviewing the Public Order Act? If, it, if they are the, the, the concern is true, what is the reason or what is the main essence of uh, actually reviewing or amending the Public Order Act? Or maybe I can ask what are the lacunas that you have seen on this uh, actually uh, a clause that you want you know, actually to, uh, to look at and amend, so to say? The lady, uh, can we wind up with the lady? Uh? Yeah. Please quickly. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. Um, my name is Mlenga Kambo the Onzasu Minister of Guidance and Religious Affairs. So the question I have is, what is the government doing to see to it that there's morality in universities and schools? Vice President. Thank you, morality. <laughs> morality, even the law says it's very difficult to follow morality. Morality is a matter, to me, it's a spiritual matter. Mm -hmm. Morality is a very personal matter. That's why for me, I'm crazy sometimes when I'm thinking. There are things that even in law that is not needed. Because uh, even when you start enacting, for example, on a, a, an issue which is inhuman or unhuman, surely the regulation is within yourself. It's just like the homosexual issue we are talking about. It's a spiritual matter. And those that are Christians ought to pray. And I believe other religions also ought to uh, uh, invoke their God if he hears at all to come through. So the moral issue comes right from our homes. Mm. It is uh, a society matter. It is not by law. 
But the laws have stipulated behaviors that are unacceptable, even today. There is a need for students, for young people to take responsibility yeah. on the things they do. The things that are happening are just beyond human. And if you talk to me as a man, uh, a woman of God, <laughs> probably a preacher, I'll say, oh, I see my Jesus getting near. Because you don't do certain things. And Jesus is coming soon in, 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 in this world. And you tell me how this message has been old. It is appointed unto man to die once, and after that, judgment. So every day I live, I get nearer to my death and therefore judgment. You can take it that way. I hope I'm making some point yeah. here. You have to know that there is somebody who made you. Whether you believe in evolution, <laughs> it has a limit. God should be the one we fear. Immorality is difficult to handle, even from a legal point. Because you do it. You do certain things even when people are not watching. But God alone sees mm. all the time. Have you, have you been seeing these young ladies uh, almost? No, did you see a picture in the newspaper? That is sad. Week? That's why I'm speaking like this. Yeah. That should not be allowed. Yeah. You should be human. What is it that you want to expose your body yeah. for? Surely you have uh, gone beyond that. Absolutely. You should not be allowed. Yeah. But the laws are there. The laws are there. When you go beyond a certain point, the law will take its course because that will be, what do you call it, uh, uh, you know, uh, that kind of behavior that is indecent uh, exposure. And uh, you will be arrested. There is nothing like, uh, you know, I am a celebrity. <laughs> In Zambia, we know where indecency starts from. Yeah. We, we would want to see you to be a celebrity with dignity. Absolutely. Yeah. Next question. So um, that is morality, lacuna in the uh, Public Order Act. I hate to be this and that. I personally never saw uh, really any wrong in Public Order Act. Don't say she's in power. I said this even when I was outside. The issue has been total misinterpretation and the manipulation and we'll say misapplication of this law. And that is why it is important to tighten where people were misapplying and we are bringing it out. We are looking at that. We will sure, surely do that. You can tell me today who has been arrested since we came into power for, uh, 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 what did they call it? I, I, illegal assembly. assembly? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Who, who has been arrested for meeting somewhere? We were being arrested even in a house. Me. In a house. I was told, no. I said, you can't win this in court. They said, no, by the time you, the court comes out, we will declare a nolly and you will have suffered. That was a police officer who told me to my face. Yeah. That is just not right. But we are bringing to try and tighten all those, the issues of uh, seven days, no officers, even when the law was clear, even from through the Resident Doctors Association, it came out, just like Mulundika, that you can marshal yourselves. If you can, you should go ahead. But we never saw that. Yeah. I hope that uh, through my government, the government of Aga in the Hichilema, the government of the UPND, people will have their freedom. But your freedom ends where mine begins. Absolutely. Basically, it's responsibility. If you are expressing yourselves and you are not breaking anything, why should we be so agitated? Mm. We should be more focused on delivering on our manifesto. Right. And then people will be with us. 2026, we will be OK. They can shout all they want. Reinstatement of new allowance. It is, uh, I, I think, let us generally appreciate the, the, the education uh, system. Yes, we talked of free education, and we have started to deliver. If you heard my statement in Parliament, the very first uh, 45 minutes of <laughs> uh, Vice President's question time, they asked about this. Where is free education? Imagine, you people, you must think with us. How do you ask in September about free 
education that we are failing <laughs> and we are using the budget that you left. Huh? I think you are with me, Zambia. No. Frank, you are with me. Yeah. How do you tell but a do person? But we see a stage when the uh, meal allowance will be It restarted. is possible. Right. That is why we should grow the economy. In fact, it is necessary that uh, meal allowance is reinstated. Well done. Well Remember done. that we, we have also increased the number of, uh, you know, bursary. But we have to structure, in my opinion, we have to structure properly the loan system. Because whether it's in America, I've heard Biden trying to see how they can resolve the issue of outstanding loans. But loans are necessary because these are things you get and you pay back later. But you have to find a way. I would rather get a loan than have a child, brilliant, not go to school. Right. So I know th there is no time. Value addition, did, did I? Yeah, the student loans come, came twice. Reinstatement of the meal. I think it's value addition. My, my daughter, colleagues, everybody listening here, value addition is the thing that we are looking at. We don't, for example, when you had the, us have a relationship, agree, have a memorandum of understanding with Congo. It is on copper, and it's not on copper going in its raw form. We don't want to continue exporting cathodes copper cathodes. We want now, today, with the issue of electric cars, that is value addition. We want to manufacture the batteries here. We will, I believe, yep. that also even manufacture the real vehicles here. This is what we are saying when we say investors come. If we go to Indonesia and they say, we can come and make you rail lines, then you say, no, you are bringing it. Uh, foreigners. So why can't you make a rail line you? Come on. We value addition, Mama, whether in agriculture, this is where we are looking right. to. Whether in uh, other fields, we want value addition. That's what will help us. That is what will create jobs for us. Right. So we are looking at that. And we are taking advantage, for example, of uh, you know the inter-African mm. trade. You talked about that. That's why there is free trade area and we are on board. This is why you hear of the, 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 the program we call Arise. That's why you hear the Minister of Infrastructure talking of making roads. It's, it's not for political reasons to break into Angola, to break into Namibia, into Congo, so that we can export the value added commodities that we are able to manufacture here. We have a beautiful beautiful programs. My plea to you, Frank, through you to the Zambian yeah. people, is let us understand the vision and run with it together. It is not for a day. Like Habab Cook says, the vision may take a bit long, but it shall surely right. come to pass. Right. As we, as, we, as we come towards the end of this wonderful marathon, uh, you know, Vice President, um, How's your boss? Who's, what qualities, uh, what kind of a the boss do you have? <laughs> I don't describe my boss in a, <laughs> with... Uh, uh, Is there a good I, I boss? Don't know. Is there a good boss? He's, he's a, a very, boss? He's a very firm man. Focused? He's extremely focused. No. He's extremely economically important. I mean intelligent. Really? And I'm choosing the words deliberately. Excellent. Vice President, in everything we do as a people, the people behind us will give us the support. I'm sure you've got a family, you've got a husband, you've got a, a family. We don't see them in the limelight. You really mention about them. Is it deliberate that you don't want them to be in the, in, in the limelight? I'm sure they've, they've played an amazing role in your life. Yes, uh, my husband is a wonderful man. He's a yeah. bishop yeah. of a ministry of God, so he's a preacher. He has stood with me. Yeah. He has these weak moments in politics. You know, yeah. when you hear your wife being insulted, it's not an easy task. So there are moments he has said, why can't you sit down? And we quarrel because he's an evangelist. He's a preacher man. You, you don't hold him. We are in Indonesia, and it is uh, predominantly 
Islamic and he's talking Christian. He doesn't, so I'm looking at him and saying, slow down here. And therefore I tell him, that's your calling. My calling is to speak for the people, to fight injustice. Yeah. It is like fire in my bones, like Jeremiah said. It's difficult for me to see injustice and sit back. That is why I'm in it. It's not for anything. And for my children, they have been as supportive as anybody uh, to me as a person. They encourage me. Of course, there are, there are moments of weakness about my career, but they have been there. They are lovely, lovely, lovely children, and I love them dearly. Mm -hmm. But for public domain, they have to find their own space. Absolutely. Nobody uses my name, and I want them every day. Right. As we end, Vice President, if when we leave this studio, and you meet Jesus in flesh outside, what kind of discussions, you know, very briefly, would you discuss with Jesus? Unless he asks me a question. All right. My song is... <laughs> and what would you ask when Jesus, or what would, you, what would you discuss with him? I think I would say your patience is uh, extreme. The power of forgiveness has brought me near you, Jesus. And today, I will sing a song of praise to the to you, Lord Jesus. Vice President, it's been a pleasure in hosting you on my first Revisit Frank Talk after 30 years. As I celebrate my 70th birthday on the 16th of June, as I wind down my 52-year career, I thank my Lord. I thank you for being on my show. Okay. Vice President, thank you so much. You have been a great man. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President. Thank you so much. This has been Frank Talk Revisited, my first guest, 30 years on, Vice President W.K. Mutale Nalumango. Like I keep on saying, do your very best, and God will do the rest. Good night to you all. Zambia, one nation.